Hello, it's day two at the third international conference on dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever here in Bangkok, where I'm joined in conversation by Dr. Christina Liu from the National Environment Agency in Singapore. Dr. Christina, welcome. Thank you, Craig. Firstly, tell me a little bit about what the National Environment Agency does. Um, the National Environment Agency is a government agency under the Ministry of Environment in Singapore, and we're responsible for dengue control in Singapore together with the Ministry of Health. Um, but we, our focus is on vector control, so control of the mosquito vector. I'm actually from the Environmental Health Institute, which is under the National Environment Agency, and we are a public health research institute and also a WHO collaborating centre for arbovirus and their associated vectors. Can you tell me a little bit about this, the dengue situation in Singapore? Um, I believe it that, it, like in Bangkok, you've had record number of cases this year. Yes, I mean, this year we've had the largest outbreak of dengue ever. Um, to date, we have around 17,800 cases. So, yes, much larger than in previous years. And, and is there any reason particular for, for the, the, the large rise? I think, um, as you've correctly mentioned, in the region there have been an increasing number of cases. Um, there are many factors. Uh, dengue is a complex interplay of many factors. But uh, one of the things that we found from our comprehensive virus surveillance program at the Environmental Health Institute is that this year we have seen the introduction of three new viruses to Singapore that were undetected previously. And these appear to have a higher rate of transmission compared to viruses from previous years. Um, Christina, your talk at the conference is about integrated vector management for dengue control in Singapore. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that for me, please? Yes, Craig. So we um, very much support the WHO strategy of integrated vector management. Our comprehensive dengue control program in Singapore does include IVM, um, the, the very various components. So, for example, we work very closely with our Ministry of Health and we share and communicate data to each other on a daily basis all year round. We also base our integrated surveillance and control on evidence. Um, so at, my, at the research institute where I work, um, we carry out applied operational research to guide vector control operations. And you were mentioning earlier that, that this year, or within the past year, you've identified three new viruses of dengue. Can you talk about that? These are not new viruses as such, but they are new introductions to Singapore, to which our local population d uh, do not have immunity. So that could be one of the reasons why we have seen an explosion in the number of cases. Also, we have low herd immunity of the adult population in Singapore to dengue. Um, our comprehensive vector control program over the years has been so successful that because of this, um, we are seeing dengue in adults at a much later age compared to in the region where you have a lot more pediatric dengue. Um, what um, would you describe, Christina, as the major challenges that your organization is facing at the moment in the battle against dengue? I think, Craig, we feel that we are doing as much as we know how to do at the moment. The problem is that in some ways, the more we do, the worse the challenge becomes. Um, we have found that in Singapore, we have a low population of mosquitoes, but yet these mosquitoes have modified in their behavior. They're now able to fly further and higher and seek out new breeding places. So it makes our challenge an ongoing thing. Um, we have to keep up with the mosquito in order to be able to understand where it's gonna go next and, and lay eggs. And this is a global challenge, is it not? Because we have had dengue for many years, but still the battle seems to be continuing. Okay. And just finally, what sort of benefits are there by attending international conferences like this one? It's a wonderful place to meet up with your peers um, for networking to get collaborations and partnerships going. It's also a place where you can learn about the new advances in um, the subject area that you're looking at. Um, and in a conference such as this one, it's um, remarkable because you have different experts from different um, areas who come together and um, there's a lot of uh, cross-sharing cross, cross sharing of knowledge and information and um, collaborations. Okay. Dr. Christine Liu, thank you very much for joining us thank today. Thank you, Craig.